All right, guys, welcome back to the podcast. It's been a while, but in light of the current situation, I thought it was a good time to make a podcast about the outbreak of this virus, but I'm not even going to say it because, you know, my other video, I made fun of people who were not saying it because their videos got demonetized, and, uh, well, so did mine, actually, and the, the video didn't have anything bad in it. There was no bad comments, no anything like that, but they demonetized it made it not suitable for ads. So we're going to see... Anyway, this is going to be more like, a, obviously, a podcast format. We have it filmed. Um, I'm only going to wear these for a minute. I just want to make sure the sound's okay, and I'll take them off. Because uh, it's, it's kind of... These are kind of only for if someone else is here. It's, if it's just me by myself, it's kind of stupid. But just want to make sure the sound's coming in good, and I can hear myself. So anyway, technical stuff. You guys don't care. What we're going to talk about is the virus, the outbreak, um, prepping for your pet mainly is like the one thing I want to get out of the way first because I feel like that's such a, I don't hear anybody really talking about it. There was one person I heard talk about it briefly and I just thought it was a really good idea to um, to talk about that because, you know, a, a lot of us have dogs, I mean... I would probably say more than half of my subscribers have a pet. I mean, probably more than half. Yeah, more than half. I would say 75% of you have a pet, either a cat or a dog or an iguana. Who the hell knows? Um, how you want to, like, for me, it's the dog. It's mainly dog people are on my channel um, if they have anything because my dog videos really do take off. So I think we're going to label uh, the title of this podcast, How to Prep. In, in this current outbreak situation for your pet or animal or dog. There's, and I'm going to have some good information, some things I've looked up that you can do. And then also beyond that, we're going to talk about like how you can pr prepare yourself for water. What are you going to do for water if, uh, you know, the treatment plant people stop going and or the power? Mainly it would be if the economy collapses, when which is from the hospitals closing or being overfilled, I mean, not closing, but... If the hospitals start getting overfilled and a lot of people start getting sick more and more, then, um, you know, that's when you're going to start seeing people not go to work because they're sick, not go to work because they don't want to get sick. And then that's when you're going to see, like, power plant people not go. If the power plant people stop going to work, then you then they're not going to have power to power up generators and the pumps that run the water treatment plants in the city and that's when you you're not you're gonna have either bad water coming out of your faucets or none at all. So uh, make sure you have stuff in in like the the thing is about it is like are we a stretch away from that? Yes and no. Like I think we're like right in the middle. I think they're doing a fantastic job of containing it and containing it. Already shutting down events in the city. There's no St. Patrick's Day parade. The Philadelphia Flyers. I had tickets for. We can't go to the game. As of uh, well, as of right now, we can go, but I don't. I don't think it's a good idea, at all. Like they limit it to five thousand. The Wells Fargo Center holds twenty. If this was the, if this was football season, I mean, this city would go upside down if they couldn't see the Eagles play. I I don't know if the coronavirus is what you would have to worry about here, and that's an honest. That's I'm being dead serious. Like this city would go ballistic if they couldn't see these guys play football. Anyway, um, and hey, I mean. <laughs> This is this is what they love here. This is a football city. Um, beyond that, it's basketball, hockey, and baseball. Actually, I think baseball will come before hockey. But anyway, um, so water, the sporting events are canceled. I, I feel like uh, that's a good move. It's only for two weeks. They're, they're shutting down schools. I think they're doing a good job. And the city only has one confirmed case. Now, outside of the city, it's everywhere, which is odd. It's odd. There's so many people here. So I think they're kind of underplaying that a little bit. Uh, I think there's more because the thing is about this virus is, and I think all of you know this by now, is that you don't actually show symptoms for quite some time. Like I think it's like two weeks. I could be wrong. Maybe it's two days, three days. It's more than a week. Definitely more than a week. So you can you can be sick and you can transmit it and you don't even know it. So I could be sick right now and I could be going to work to, you know next week. And start start to show symptoms, and that's the scary thing about it too. Like people who work in factories and who may be sick and, and touching things. So if you get stuff delivered to your house, even when you go to the store, when you're buying bottled water, anything that you get from the store, I mean, I would wipe it down or or at least hit it with some hot water from the sink. Um, 
just because you just don't know, and I think that's just a safe move. And it's it's weird. So what we're going to talk about is, like, at what point do you call it in your own eyes a pandemic? Like, what... Like, I know what the government's saying, and I know, but you, at, at some point, you got to make a decision. Like, this is real. Like, I see a lot of jokes on Facebook. I see a lot of people, like, underplaying it. Oh, you know, you complain about corona, but you don't even wear a condom. Actually, I thought that was kind of, that was a good one. Some girl posted it um, that I'm friends with, and she, she put it, y'all complaining about the cor- catching the coronavirus, but won't even wear a condom. That's some real shit. That's deep. That is deep, Right? That's real facts, though. Like, smoking kills people. Like, there's all these other things that kill people. This is a little bit different, I think, because it can affect other things. It's not just about getting sick. More than likely, you're going to get sick and you're going to recover from it if you're healthy and you have a good set of lungs, like I said in other videos. But, like, (laughs) it's not about really that. It's about the economy. It's about all these events that are being closed down, people losing money, the stores being empty, and just one thing leading into another. Maybe we get on lockdown. So, like, at what point do you quarantine yourself in your own home? I'm at that stage now. I'm doing it now. I haven't left the house. I have stuff. I don't I don't leave. I left the house today to get salt and pepper so I can make chicken and rice. Right? That's what I did. Um, so, like, yeah, I'm quarantined now. I'm not leaving the house until into the foreseeable future. I'm, I'm going to make a video for you guys that go to the gym. Stay out of the gym. The gym is the number one way you're going to get this thing. I promise you. It's so disgusting in the gym. I don't care how many times you wipe down that bench. The breathing in that place is just gross. So stay out of the gym. I got a video coming up on YouTube to where you can home gym, and I got some uh, really good ideas for you guys, and you don't even need weights, and you're going to gain. You're going to gain muscle. You're going to gain mass, or you're going to maintain, all right, as long as you have the food to keep up with that. So at what point do you call it? Um... And at what point do you call it bug out? At what point do you, does this get so out of control that you you leave the city? Because the cities can get bad. Now, like I said, I think that this city in particular where I'm at, and even like New York City has been okay. It's like the suburb area where they like quarantine the whole thing. National Guard has been uh, implemented out there to, to keep uh, – keep or clean up right now but that can change in like a blink of an eye and people can just be like stuck in their houses and not be able to leave and if you leave you're going to get like arrested or something or who who knows so like at, for me it's it's uh we'll get into that but like that's what I'm going to I'm going to tell you guys um where at what point do I call it like at what point do I I leave the city and and bug out um so we're going to get into that. But first, let's let's talk about the, the first thing and dog prep. So or whatever kind of dog or animal you have. So for me, I'm sorry about that like helicopter or something. I don't know if you guys can hear it. I had the window up. It's just so hot in here. I know I'm wearing like this freaking hat and, st- and all that. But like, I don't know. Um, it's cold out. I was walking the dog. That's the only thing I do go outside for is to walk my dog. Uh, so... I'm not at the point like wearing an N95 mask outside. Like honestly, that's not gonna do shit. The mask right now. So, um, there may be a point in time in the future where you do wear the mask. You know, actually, I have. Uh, I did realize that I don't even think I have the right one. I don't, I don't know. There's so many different like. I have an N95 mask, but it's the one with the port. I don't think it's like the medical one. So, but it will better than nothing, right? Anyways, so dog prep. Um, what do you do about your dog? What do you do about uh, – for for me, I'll tell you guys what I did. So I got one – whatever I have left in her food is about two weeks. And then I got another bag. I'm going to get another bag. Uh, it should be here any day. I got a whole other bag, and they last a while. So I get her bag of food that um, – it should be good for three months, right? These The two bags that I have that aren't even cracked open yet. That should be good. So like – but like – there's a and this this food that I give her is very high in nutrients, so you don't have to give her a lot, you know. Especially if you know you're staying in the house and you're kind of quarantined and you know you're not going for walks outside or nothing like that. There has been no proof of animals getting this thing yet, so that's a good thing. Uh, if if you were able to get your dog was gonna get it and like they lick something off the ground or who knows they have so many germs, but like uh, you know that's that's a good thing that they haven't found any any proof of that yet, but. Uh, cause that's a, that's a, that would be a scary thing if, 
your dog could get the damn virus and, um, you know, you give it to you. That would suck. So for me, I have that and then like treats, have like 10 bags of treats. And like that may sound overboard, but like, okay, what do I have to lose? They're kind of cheap. They're like $5 a bag. I, I spent like 60 bucks or something, um, you know, on treats. But what do you do? If, and also dog poop, uh, bleh, dog poop bags. <laughs> uh, they were important because one, I didn't have any left. And then two, like, yeah. So like. What if you don't have money for that or, like, you're trying to find an alternate situation? Alternate... Ugh, fucking Christ. Why can't I think? An alternate way of feeding your dog. Maybe, like, because the bags of food that I have are $90. So, like, maybe you don't want $90 bag just sitting around. The good thing about it is if you do get it, you're going to use it, right? The dog's going to eat it. So, like, you know, you don't really have much to lose. But there isn't... So, something also that I'm doing is I'm buying these two big-ass bags of rice... And then a bunch of canned food. And I don't give my dog canned food. It's not good for your dog. But, like, you can get uh, – this is just an emergency backup for her, really. Um, like, if we have – if because I don't see this virus going away for a year. Like, this country could be totally different in a year from now. Not just because Joe Biden won a Democratic election. <laughs> but he's not going to be Trump anyway. But, like, I'm just saying. That's a joke. All joking aside, though, like, this could be a totally different country in a year – and, uh, you know, it's thick shit. this ain't going to go away overnight. If you actually, you know, what I would highly recommend you doing is going to the Joe Rogan podcast. After this one, though, like, don't, like, stop in the middle and go check out someone else's shit. Um, listen to this one and then go to the Joe Rogan uh, podcast. And he has a medical doctor. Actually, let me try to find out which one. It's, like, the last episode, maybe, like, a f- like a few days ago. Uh, he had a medical professional on who deals with infectious diseases. I'm going to t- uh, show you exactly which one it is. Uh, episode 1439 with Michael Osterholm. It's a really good informative podcast about this whole thing and like like how long it's going to last because it's not going to go away in, in a month. I had to stop the camera for a minute because the card got full and I had to just delete a bunch of stuff. All right. So anyway, what I was saying is it's this thing's not going to go away with the seasons. I know I've heard something, some people talk about, you know, summer's coming and spring and it's going to kill the virus. That's not true. Um, I know even in the Joe Rogan podcast, the guy, people were talking about, I guess, uh, if you go to the spa or whatever, that can like help, like. The spas are good for you, but it's not going to help. Your your lungs can't. Your lungs aren't intaking 180 degrees. In fact, your lungs can't even take over 100 degrees. So, not going to kill the virus. But bunch of good information about that. Uh, so I advise you to check that out. So dog food. Uh, back to that. Rice and like bags of rice and uh, canned dog food, and you can mix that together. And that's like long term, right? You can really. Um, go far with that most of the dog food is made with rice anyway and then just mix it with some meats or like lamb or just different dog food stuff now i know it's not like for when you feed a dog really good healthy food and you feed a dog shitty canned food from china uh which try not to get by the way then you the dog well they have gas uh it's just it's just not good for them but in an emergency situation that's not a bad uh, – that's what you would do. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. I'm going to probably make a video on that, show you guys. Go to the pet store together. We're going to pick out some things uh, for the dogs. And, like, people – I don't think people are considering this at all. Like, I haven't heard really one person talk about prep, mainly focus on, like – and, like, I'm a single guy. So, like, if you're a family person and you have kids and stuff, like, obviously that's the most important thing. But, like, even that, like, I only see, like, YouTubers talk about it, like, family youtubers and they're like oh we're going to prep and stuff and like most people are pretty smart i know i have uh someone that i really care about who has a couple of kids we don't talk right now we're not we're not talking right now Uh, i don't know if we'll ever talk again but that doesn't mean that i don't care about her and she has two little kids and i'm like i can't i wish i could just like uh ask her if she's okay but like right now um we just can't we're not talking so uh it is what it is but that that doesn't mean I don't care about her or her kids, and it's just a crazy 
<clears throat> it's just a crazy situation in general, and I'm, I'm, I really hope that she's uh, getting it together. Now, she's uh, military, so I think she's, she's a pretty smart girl, so I think she's got it together pretty good. Um, but, yeah, I'm really worried about her and, and my, fr- my best friend and his kids and my sister and her kids, and my mother's older, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of things. And, like, the, the whole old people thing, that's just a rumor. It doesn't really matter. Like, it's people with health risks that you got to worry about. Anybody could have a health risk. You know, um, one of those things. So it's – it's and also most of the people I know have dogs. So there's, like – there's a lot of reasons why I'm doing these videos um, just because I have a voice on YouTube and people do listen to what I say a lot of times. And I really uh, – I feel honored and lucky to be able to have this platform where people – Take what I say seriously, so I, I feel like I'm obligated almost to be like a, a little bit of a voice and try to maybe bump start you guys into taking this seriously because I know a lot of you, most of you who are on my channel are either dog people or like in into like everyday carry or survival in some way, shape, or form. We, this channel isn't based off survival, but it was in the beginning, so a lot of the people who are here in the beginning are from like that, that kind of um, genre, so... <sighs> anyway, I just think, like, for me, like, survival isn't about making YouTube videos. It isn't a, uh, about doomsday prepping or anything like that. It's just really about being a man, stepping up and take care of your family and, you know, taking care of yours and just being smart. It's just generally just being a smart person, right? It doesn't have anything to do with, you know, being some kind of crazy hoarder because that's really what it is. You're, you're hoarding things, right? If you're a massive prepper, you're hoarding. But those massive preppers right now are having a field day with these people who just don't take it seriously, and they have for the last 10 years, and they have just stockpiles of food and grain and beans and rices and all that stuff, and, and uh, water wells dug in, like Wrangler Star, he has this well put into his house, which is absolutely genius. I don't recommend, I would never put a well in this ground, but like, the river, so like, okay, now that we talked about dog stuff, also make sure you have... Water just for your animal. Like, I don't know how, if that can make any sense, but, like, there's a good chance and possibility. Like I said, like, the faucets may not work. So when you are getting your own water, and I'm talking for mainly, I'm a single guy, so I can't really speak for, for someone who has kids. If I had kids, I would have to buy 10 times as much stuff. And I understand that's hard. We don't have money. You have to make the choice. Like, maybe you have a credit card with a $5,000 limit. I honestly, I would max it out right now. I really would. And um, and get all supplies, anything. Maybe not max it out, but, like, you would have to make that conscious decision very soon if you're going to spend the money on prepping. You may have to. There's a really good chance. And I would say we're about 75% chance there right now that within two weeks there'll be – you won't be able to leave the house in a city, in a big city. New York, Philadelphia, Los Angeles is right there at the brink of it. Uh, Miami. And, and, uh, the girl that I was talking about in particular is from Georgia, and from what I understand, that place is getting hit pretty hard with like uh, preschool teachers and all kinds of stuff in Atlanta. And I don't know. It's just, a, it's, I would probably guess that the United States is going to have 20,000 cases by the end of March. Easy. That's just my rough guess. Philadelphia, we have one right now. I would expect that number to triple within the next couple of weeks. Triple, like over a thousand. All right. I think they're underplaying this one. I think there's probably just nobody's come to light yet, and it's just it's and that's a scary thing. Like anybody could have it around you at any time, and you just don't know because they don't know, right? So that's a scary thing. That's why I decided to stay in now because people don't know, and the symptoms are cold and cough at the beginning and then they can switch and then it's like pneumonia it's a respiratory thing and and just i don't know it gets bad this is not the flu i'm really sick about people underplaying it i had i'm gonna have this argument with him again now on friday because last week on friday we talked about how oh, it's just a flu Twelve thousand people die from the flu but like this isn't the flu and it's it's not about it's not even about that like i keep saying it's about Everything else that comes along with something like this, the collapse of the – of look at the Dow Jones. It's down like, uh, what is it, 17 um, points or something? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not into the stock thing. It's not my th- – wait. It's not a good way for me to, to make money right now So or 
And I just don't get into it. I don't know. People do. They're crazy about it. You can play it in the comments, but I know the Dow Jones is hit hard. Actually, we can look at it. I think if I click right here, I don't want to. I can bring it up like easily on my Mac. It comes like right. Okay, whatever. Now I lost where I'm at. Okay. <laughs> I need to be able to watch the recording because I need to see my voice patterns because I don't have the headphones on. So anyways, um, water. So for me, I have the water filter, which is going to last until water shuts off, if it ever does, which we hope it doesn't. I don't know if it's ever going to get there. The city's been pretty good about canceling events early and stuff like that. Like the St. Patrick's Day Parade thing, they said they weren't going to do it. Today they did it. Uh, that's on Sunday. That's a huge deal. I think I think that's a really big deal uh, for them to do that. That This parades in this city if you don't know if you're not from philly um the saint patrick's day for everybody's freaking irish here you know so like that's a huge even if you're not irish you celebrate saint patrick's day is a huge deal for me i'm not a party i don't do parades unless like a sporting event wins or something but like imagine a flyers won the stanley cup because they could do that this year which is horrible because you can't even watch them play uh, it, it, they would not have a parade, or they would do it later, or they're, they're thinking about even canceling the NHL season and moving it for like back. Even the NBA is thinking that. Like this thing is not the flu. So like, get that out of your head right now. This is not the flu. This is way, way worse than the flu. Just checking the timestamp. All right. So water for me, the backup, backup, backup plan though is the Delaware River. It's not far. So ways to filter water. You can um, boil it, right? Just boil it. Have multiple different water filtration systems. I know if you don't have these now, then it's it's too late, right? But why can't I get this to stay where I want it? It's at, it's not though. It's not too late. You can. It's not. It's not following the damn thing. Hold on, guys. I might have screwed up. I want to. Oh, here we go. I got the stock market. Oh, Dow Jones, a oh, five point eighty six percent. I think that's like pretty bad. Like everything's down, right? I don't know what that means, but like everything's down. There's one of these are like fourteen percent. That's crazy. I, like two days ago, it was all green. Now it's all red down. Like that's bad. Um, things are gonna get bad. I think. I think things are gonna get really bad, really quick, really. People around here like i so i went to target earlier like i said to get um a, f a couple of things so i can make my chicken and they had no damn salt and pepper i'm like what the hell i must have not where did i do with it or the dog stole it just blame it on her so yeah i went to target and i noticed like the only thing that's empty off the shelves is cleaning stuff the canned food aisle is stocked just mind-boggling how much cleaner do you need you don't need that much cleaner. You really don't. I mean, like, people are just so stupid. How are you going to eat? Like, what are you going to do with toilet paper? Toilet paper is for excreting your waste when you eat and drink. If you can't eat and drink, you can just it's, just... it's just so weird. I don't understand. I would love to have a conversation with somebody in the food aisle that has, like, three cases of hand sanitizer and no water and no food, no canned food, no provisions for their dog or cat if they have that and it's just i don't know it's just weird so anyway the delaware river is pretty close to me it, like even if it gets to that point though like so for me we're going to talk about now like when do you call it a real bad situation like when do you when do you stay in the house right for most of you i hope it's already ha like you already decided okay let's just not leave the house for a month right how Maybe you have – get a good – I actually think I'm going to go pick up a PlayStation um, this this week. I think I'm going to get one tomorrow. I might just go buy a PS4 and a new TV. Do I have – my TV missing the plug or cord or something. So I think I'm going to buy a PlayStation just so I can hang out at home and just play video games and lift weights, all right? Because I have a gym here. And like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm going to have an alternate way to, to lift weights where you um, – Basically with uh, resistant bands. Resistant bands are like the new biggest thing right now in bodybuilding. And they work really well. They work there because it's not gravity. It's the band. It's doing the same freaking thing. It's, re it's, you know, it's all about that feel and the muscle. It's not about the number or the weight. Anyway. Um, ah, my knee itches. 
So, when do you call it? I call it now, right? It's it's already at that point for me. No public places, no restaurants, no going in, no going anywhere unless I have to. Um, that's just my decision. That's I don't want to get sick. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. So I'm staying in the house. And uh, you know, call me crazy, whatever. But like, I think a lot of people should do that right now. I think for me, that's that's what it is. It's just do it now, right? They're already canceling sporting events. That's it's for me. I was already decided to do that before they canceled sporting events, and I'm kind of like a homebody anyway. I'm a little bit too old to be going out to clubs and and stuff and like going to bars. I don't do that kind of thing anymore. So like, it's just not my thing. Uh, I just like to make video content, create things, and hang out with my dog and hang out with people as as I need to. I don't, you know, I still hang out with my friends. I still do things. I still make, you know, do what I do. But, like, I don't go to bars and, like, it's just not my thing, you know. Sporting events, I love to go to Flyers games. Can't do that right now. Uh, so things like that, you're going to have to just sacrifice. So what do you, what are the most important things, like I said, Water and food are the most important things, and if you have a dog, consider that because they need to eat too. And I, I, it's just so crazy to me how many people aren't considering that. So for safety, um, cleaner. You don't need a ton of cleaner. You, you know, you might have to start carrying hand sanitizer. I already do. Um, an N95 mask. You're not. We're not at that point where you need to start wearing that. At what point do I start wearing an N95 mask um, when the hospitals are full? When the hospitals start getting full, people uh, are in the thousands of sick in the city, then I start, I put the mask on, right? And I go, I don't leave the house. If I leave the house, the mask is going on. Um, so that's that's for me. And eye protection, really important to wear eye protection. I've seen people have um, goggles, like, like the swimming goggles. That's a little ridiculous. I have pretty good safety glasses I'm going to wear. I even have ones at work to have like this. They're 3M. They're really nice. You can get them at Home Depot. They're not so ridiculous looking, but um, they probably are sold out right now, to be honest with you. But check them out. I don't think a lot of people are thinking about it. I really don't, unless they're watching YouTube channels. And let's just face it, like in your general area, like around here, I don't think a lot of people are watching this and going, oh, safety glasses, goggles. They're not. They're just not thinking about it, right? So the general person isn't watching these things. So go and get these things now. As you, you're, ta- um, you're listening to me, go and get it because it's not going to hurt you to have a freaking $10 pair of safety glasses. And I say $10, that's expensive, but like these are the good ones like to have the seal, you know? So, you know, protecting your eyes. And look at me, I'm like touching my face. But anyway, I'm in my house, so I'm good. I hope, maybe. <laughs> I wash my hands seven times a day at least in the last hour. So for me, that's what it is. N95 mask, eye protection, uh, late non-latex gloves. If you, ha- you know, if you have to start wearing gloves to go outside, you know we're we're in bad shape. So we're not at that level yet, um, but it could get there easily, right? So at what point do you bug out? This is something. This is the subject. So. You guys remember, like, one of the first videos or podcasts I've made is about, it's a, it was about survival and the, the apocalypse being prepared, and not just necessarily for the end of the world bullshit, or stereotypes, and, you know, you can speculate and make all these crazy imaginative uh, ways that the world can end. For me, it's more like a practical thing. Like there's a snowstorm, a power outage, there's a fire, there's a, you know, a power plant that explodes or whatever. There's so many different variables of ways that there's reasons to have like basic preparations in place for those things. So that was what that video is about. And I just find it so ironic that like now that video or podcast is getting views. Like people are watching it now because it's like too late though, like. Like even the bug out bag, I'm getting comments on bug out bag videos. We're not, you're not. If you if you're setting up a bug out bag now, you're too you're too late, right? You need to be starting to worry about bugging in. This is a bug in situation. We're not at bug out now. It could get to bug out, right? But you're looking at <laughs> if you have to bug out of the city because of this thing. And maybe I should explain real quick quick what bugging out is. 
Bugging out means you grab a bag if you have one set up and you leave and you're not coming back for maybe two months, maybe three, maybe a year, maybe ever, right? Maybe ever. Like you got to really think about that. So where do you, where are you going? If you have a family, what are you going to do? Do they all have prep bags, bug out bags? Do they have, and, and these are, these are not 72 hour bags. These are not get home bags there's a difference bug out bag is a bag that you're gonna live out of for a while you're a homeless person really think about it like that you're a homeless person that has you're like living in you know this whole the whole world is gonna change now everything is gonna change now because of this because we are so underprepared so many people are underprepared for this i can't believe how many comments i got on this bug out bag video I was actually going to make a new one, but I've, I have so many other videos to make. I'm like, well, is that really that important? I'm going to get to it, but I just figured I would mention it in the podcast here at the end. So in a bug out bag, you're going to have things like a sleep system, uh, a good pair of hike shoes because you're going to be doing a lot of walking, ways to um, filter water. So the most important thing about a bug out bag is there's like three layers, right? So there's, there's water. Or not three layers. There's three important things that you should base it off of. <clears throat> Water, air, and fire, right? Without those three things right there, and even if you just have like a, a small sack with those three things in it, just a lighter and some cotton balls mixed in Vaseline, that's your fire. Good, great. Maybe just a lighter. That's fine. Have a few lighters. Uh, I have multiple ways to light fire. Uh, it, it's important to cook. It's important to disinfect water. It's, it's just, you need it. You really need it. It's, it's vital to your survival, <laughs> you know, if you have to bug out. And we're talking about gridlock down situation. If the, and I'll get to why I would bug out and when, at what, what point do we do that? Um, but if you don't have ways to filter water or even boil it, then you're screwed. And as far as breathing goes, do you have an N95 mask or do you have a full face mask with the respirators do you have extra cartridges and then you you base it off of those three things and then you go from there now I need a good pair of hiking shoes or shoes or just anything maybe to walk in you know and this is bug out so you should have this prepared like a, a 72 hour bag would be something you have in your trunk in case you are driving down the road and your car breaks down and you're 10 miles or uh, 10 hours away and you have to walk home and you're a woman that has heels, you should have a pair of sneakers in the trunk, right? Good pair, old pair of sneakers and, you know, maybe uh, some things like that in the, in the bag in case, so you can walk home just, and maybe a few bottles of water, a way to filter water, or maybe something you can uh, keep yourself warm in your car if it's the middle of winter and your car dies and the tow truck can't get there and you can't walk and you're stuck in a snowbank. What do you do then? So these are things that I've been talking about on my channel since we started this thing. Uh, so now it's coming to play to where these things are really important. And you you actually, if you don't have them, you, there's a real good chance that you aren't going to make it through this. So, you know, it's just one of those things to, to think about right now that, are you know, it's not too late. Like, I'm not saying, hey, don't do it. Like, if you have the means to do it and, and you have if you're on this channel you probably do but if you're just landing on this podcast now it's you're probably just like oh shit man he's right i don't have anything i really and my family doesn't have anything and it's a sad thing i and i know if i had kids they would all have bug out bags they would all have it every one of them they you know snacks in the bag aren't like a bag of fruit snacks or a bag of you know doritos you know, I'm talking about peanuts, nuts, things that are high in protein, things that are going to get you by, things that are going to, you know, high in calorie content, maybe uh, arm, armies, bar, the bars, armies, arm bars, I don't know what they're called. Uh, the food bars, the military grade food bars, or maybe even a, a couple bags of freeze dried food just to get you by if you do have to hike, you know, a few days out of the city. And you and your family, I mean, this could really turn into that. So, I don't think it's ever going to get to that level. I think we're going to just be quarantined. And the more they cancel these events, they're going to stop the spreading of it fairly, hopefully fairly easily. Numbers are going to rise in the spreading of it, but I think they're doing a really good job of controlling it with these events closing and stuff like that and people starting to smart up and just stay home. So hopefully that works. Um, But if it does get bad, at what point do you bug out? Well, 
like I said, when the power starts shutting off, when people, because I need to go to work and make money too, and I, I have to pay rent, right? So, to to for me to leave here, there would it would have to be a situation where I can no longer go to work. Like they closed the plant, work you know works closed, uh, schools are closed, hospitals are full, sanitation isn't coming. There's trash build up in the streets. People are in martial law shooting each other for hand sanitizer. Uh, you know people are going to door to door to take your supplies. At that point, even before it gets to that, if I just see just a hint of that, it's mainly for me, it's when I can no longer go to work anymore, I'm out of here. I'm gone. And you will never see me again, period. Like, I might make a vlog with my phone if there's internet, but there probably won't be any internet anyway. I'll probably, you you know, what are you going to do, really? You're just, you're pretty much, there's no YouTube, there's no nothing. The world could get so crazy. This could get so crazy. But that's very... Very, very unlikely that happens. Um, you know, because even if you look at the situation in China, it's pretty bad there, right, in Wuhan. But it hasn't got to that point. People aren't bugging out, you know. It's getting better. People are starting to stay at home. That the, 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 the numbers are dropping, uh, and that was, like, the major outbreak point of it. So, like, of course it's going to get here, but they already took steps to to – stop the spreading so if you look at the situation in china and it's probably at its worst right now right i would think um unless food starts to run out but you you can watch youtube there's a guy who records it all and he goes around so i think all is well with all that i'm just letting you guys know there is a very there is the possibility you can never rule out that possibility that you may have to leave and like i'm saying i'm just trying to let you guys know at what point do you call it that do you do you take the family and you you load them up in the car if you can drive a car, if the highways aren't completely backed up or whatever's going on, you know. For me, I would uh, probably uh, – only way I, way I would hike out of here is if I couldn't use the highway. Uh, you use railroad, walk the railroad track. That's my number one thing uh, to get out of here. Uh, avoid highways, avoid anything. But if you can drive, you drive until you run out of gas pretty much. Unless you can get to where you're going. Now, like my plan is to go in a specific location up upstate in the Appalachian Mountains where probably everyone's going to go. Uh, but, you know, it's a pretty big place, so I think we'll be okay. Um, take me and my dog, and we go out there, and we, we live in the mountains for whatever. Like, I know that sounds ridiculous. And, like, honestly, like, even just saying that, it's like, could that fucking happen? Like, if that actually happened... Like, that would be just, it would be crazy. But are you ready for that? Like, I don't think it's ever going to come to that because, again, like, look at the situation in Wuhan. All right, it's probably at its peak worst right now, and it's getting better. It's it's not a good situation. People are in lockdown. They can't come out of their house. I mean, sir, some people are coming out. There's People aren't going to work. You can't drive, period. You get caught driving in, in Wuhan, it's like, a fi- it's like a fine. You get arrested, all this stuff. So you, you can't drive. Uh, the only people who can drive are people who are, like, taking people to work. It's, like, medical staff and stuff like that. So it's one of those situations where if it comes to that, like, how do you get to work? How do you make money? How do you, you know? So these, there's so many things that can go bad, and I just thought that it was a good idea to make this podcast to uh, bring light to it. I know, like, there's a lot of things on Facebook going around where uh, people, ah, oh, there's no, you know, this is just all strike the fear and, People are just, you know, being uh, being crazy, and they're, they're putting uh, these memes up about uh, all these different things that happen, Y two K, and uh, the different different things that happen, um, anthrax, and didn't kill us, but it happened. The, this is a situation to where it's not just about again, and I just can't stress this enough. It's really just not about the fucking virus, right? Because there's a good chance you can catch it and just be fine. It's about everything else that comes along with that. It's it's about the economy crashing. It's about people not being able to go to work, hospitals being full, and if you have kids, you know, they get a basic cold, they can't get basic care because, like I said, there's 100,000 people in a hospital, and you don't want to be there because they all got the coronavirus, so that's the last place you want to be. So anyway, guys, I, I you know, I don't know. I don't want to keep going on and dragging this on. Hopefully this is the last uh, of these videos I have to make. I don't want to keep talking about it, but again, it's one of those subjects to where like I'm in a position of influence on YouTube and my podcast and people 
people generally listen to what I have to say, and uh, you know, this is a long one, so hopefully you put your earbuds in, your you know, wherever you're doing, and just listened. And um, you know, I just hope I hope everybody's taking it serious because even if it even if you decide to, and even if it doesn't get bad, like you don't have anything to lose by just putting some extra preparations aside. You really don't have anything to lose at all. So it's not a bad deal, and hopefully it wakes up a bunch of people. Hopefully it wakes up our country. Hopefully uh, we start stockpiling on an M95 masks because that can make a world of a difference right now if we had enough masks for everybody. And we have the means to do that. We just spend the money in the wrong places, right? I almost forgot to, to mention this, and I wanted to get this out of the way before the end of the podcast, um, but medical supplies. So make sure you guys have the proper medical supplies in place. Make sure you have some kind of antibiotics, Advil, um, Tylenol, cough syrup, things that just can make you co- more comfortable if you get sick and you can't go to the store. So make sure you have uh, plenty of medical supplies. Don't, don't overdo it. Make sure you have uh, alcohol, wipes, and different stuff like that. Um, and that's pretty much it for that. That's the medical thing. I kind of almost forgot to mention that now. I was ready to to start cleaning up and I took a look over there and I have my medical kits all out and just trying to go over my supplies and see what I have and I'm like holy shit I forgot to completely mention medical and also with your dogs uh, make sure you have some stuff for them in case you do have to bug out or hike out of here Uh, for dogs mainly you have to worry about three things puncture wounds broken paws and limbs okay from attacked animals puncture wounds um, uh, rabies and stuff from a stray dog. So make sure you have antibiotics for your, for your dog if you can get them. If you can't, um, you know that's a, that's a bad situation. But hopefully the veterinarians aren't closed and all. You can get your dog pet care. But uh, if you do have to bug out, make sure you have something in place for your dog as far as medical goes. Like I said, puncture wounds. So plenty of galls. You don't need tourniquets um, or anything for your dogs or nothing like that. But Plenty of galls and some kind of like limb wraps for their limbs and blood clotting agent for broken paw, uh, split fingernail paws and stuff like that. It's mainly what happens with uh, dogs. If you do have the booty footy things um, and you're hiking a long time, dogs that aren't used to that will develop. Uh, they will start to get bad, you know, their, their hands, their paws will start to tear up. So make sure you get, uh, if you do want to really take this serious get your dog some uh hiking booties um storm has a pair we haven't reviewed them yet we haven't even wore them yet um you know so uh, maybe we'll do that soon but just something to keep keep in the back of your mind uh if you're going to take this serious that's just one thing i would recommend so anyway my prayers go out to you and your families and your kids and your loved ones and your dogs and your cats and your parrots and whatever the hell else you have uh (laughs) But uh, that's going to be the end of this show. I hope you guys enjoy this. Please do me a favor and like, share, subscribe. That really helps the channel out a lot. Uh, I don't like to say it until the video is (laughs) over. Maybe you didn't like it, whatever. But uh, comment below your thoughts about this whole situation. If you want to watch it on YouTube, you can check it out on Spotify. It's on iTunes. It's on all the the big deal. Uh, Well, actually, just those. Not (laughs) iTunes, Spotify, YouTube. There we go. All right. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoy. I will see you in the next few videos. I'm on vacation again for another few days. Looking forward to just uh, making more content for you guys and getting through this thing together. And, again, my thoughts, my prayers go out to you and your family. I love you all. Have a good one. Peace.